हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल ऑन इंजेक्शन मोल्डिंग सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी द थर्ड वीडियो एंड द वीडियो विल टॉक अबाउट ऑप्टिमाइजिंग कूलिंग परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ अ मोल्ड सो टिपिकली लेट अस स्टार्ट विद द मोल्ड साइकिल टाइम सो यू फर्स्ट क्लोज द मोल्ड देन यू फील द पार्ट then you pack or apply holding pressure then you allow the part to cool inside the mold then you open and inject a component so typically the cooling time counts for 65 to 80 percent of the total cycle time hence if you can optimize the cooling time or improve the cooling efficiency you get a better quality part at a lower cost cooling circuit designs typically these are round holes in the mold parts or on flat surfaces grooves are cut on the surfaces through which the coolant is circulated you provide baffles for primarily in the core regions bubblers also in the core regions and uh, sometimes we use thermal pins where you cannot use baffles or bubblers So let us start how a baffle typically looks like. Here you can see a part shown in a green color, and a core is shown in this gray color. So you drill a cross drill, and uh, you drill another drill here, and uh, you put about one mm thick or two mm thick steel plate inside this large hole. So what happens is the water line or the core, the coolant comes through this hole. flow gets diverted it takes a u turn and comes down and goes to the next hole so basically this method provides maximum cross section area for the coolant but it is difficult to mount divider exactly in the center <coughs> bubbler has a similar construction except that it is in two levels so instead of baffle you have another tube uh water comes from the bottom level goes into the tube cools the top part of the steel of the core and then water comes around the periphery and goes from other hole thermal pins uh this is similar to the bubbler or the baffle except that these pins are specially made they are designed they are completely sealed with a specific liquid inside the uh inside the tube so when it comes into hot uh, contact in the hotter region the liquid gets vaporized and goes to the other end and cools down and condenses and comes back this is how the heat transfer takes place so we fix the thermal bin such a way that we one end is as close as to the polymer melt and other end is open in the coolant area let us understand the importance of the cooling the rate and the uniformity of the cooling affects the quality and production cost of the part quality consideration surface finish high gloss demands higher temperature local high temperature causes different surface finish if the temperature distribution across the core regions or the cavity are, is not same then you get patchy surfaces hysterostasis result of differential cooling rate at differential regions of the part and cause premature part failure or warping quality consideration crystallinity degree of crystallinity of crystal materials like polypropylene is affected by cooling rate of the melt variations in the crystallinity affects shrinkage of the part resulting into warpage or difficulty in maintaining required dimensional tolerance so typically polypropylene has a tendency to continue to shrink over a period of time so 
even after rejecting the part, although it is 100 percent solidified, certified, we recommend to measure the polypropylene part after 48 hours. Thermal bending. It is the effect of and variation in temperature between top and bottom surface. That is difference between cavity surface temperature and the core surface temperature. It is similar to bending of a biometric strip when heated. Production cost concentrate. Ejection temperature. The part must be stiff enough to resist any tendency to warp. It should be stiff enough to resist any local forces on the surface from the ejection system. Since the cooling line, sorry, since the cooling time comprises of 65 to 80 percent of the total cycle time, any reduction in the cooling time significantly reduces the cycle time. Depending on the service application of the part, there will be always a compromise between uniform cooling to assure part quality and a fast cooling to minimize production cost. Factors affecting the cooling performance. So let us understand there are three different areas of heat extraction. Heat transfer from plastic to cavity wall, heat transfer through the cavity wall and heat transfer from cavity wall to the coolant. Let us understand the first heat transfer mode. It is heat transfer from plastic to cavity wall. The difference between melt temperature and the mold surface temperature is directly impacting the heat transfer. Materials property. Quality of contact between the mold surface and the plastic wall as it is getting cold. Heat transfer through the cavity wall. Mold metal property that is thermal conductivity. Higher the thermal conductivity, better is the heat transfer. So typically when at a deep course, you we recommend to use thermal pins or beryllium copper insert where the thermal conductivity is higher. The distance between cooling channel and a plastic surface. The more the distance, less the heat transfer. The temperature difference between plastic melt and coolant channel interior. So thermal conductivity, let us understand different mold materials typically used in mold construction. So stainless steel is having thermal conductivity of 23, P20 is a 29. Carbon steel is 46.7 and the two grades of beryllium copper, one is 130 and 260. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we can use beryllium copper alloys for core pins with the long, for the long bosses. So let us understand the cross section analysis of a heat transfer through the cavity wall. Here we have taken a cross section of a part with a rib here. So this is the part and these are the four round holes. As you can see, these are the isotherms, isothermal lines. Blue region indicates 60 and red region indicates 260. If we change the construction, if you reduce the diameter of the cooling lines, we are able to provide three cooling lines instead of two on the cavity side and four cooling lines on the core side instead of two. Here you can see the isotherms are taking place, are taking the shape of the part. So here in this particular case, the heat transfer is much better than the previous condition. So a proper optimum balance between the uh, larger diameter holes and the smaller diameter holes is to be uh, done at, at the beginning of the mold construction. Length of the cooling line. So here, here you can see there are three considerations. There are two cavity mold, inlet and outlet. In the figure B, we have provided one more cooling line here and it is connected. Ideally, if the two different cavities will have if, if, if the two different cavities have different uh, cooling lines, the heat transfer is much better. 
heat transfer from cavity wall to coolant turbulence in the coolant turbulent flow as indicated by reynolds number which is greater than 20, number 2300 removes heat more efficiently than laminar flow due to mixing effect causes caused by the turbulence and coolant in inlet temperature coolant properties also thank you i hope you like my video please do not forget to click on a like button and please subscribe to my channel thank you